please put your hands together for Chris, everyone. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing tonight? My name is Chris McGonigal, and my, can, am I talking loud enough? Sorry. Uh, my story is the first time someone pulled a gun on me. <laughs> True story from memory. Uh, phased back uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was in college. Um, I went to Shippensburg University. Anybody go to Shippensburg this year? A lot of people from Westchester at the time used to go to Shippensburg. And I had a summer job. I worked at a supermarket. And um, I was a sophomore, going to become a junior. And my buddy calls me up and he says, um, you know, we're moving into an apartment next year. And I got this furniture, but we have to take it up tonight. I was like, it's a Thursday night. Why do we have to take it up now? Well, they're moving out. We got to get this furniture out. We had no furniture other than like a mattress on the floor and a nightstand. So I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm fine. Because we'll, we'll leave at 6 o'clock. Um, we'll be there in like two hours. And we'll drop it off. We should be home around midnight. He goes, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is ride up with me, help me unload the stuff. I'll get, to get you a six-pack of beer. Two hours, we're up. Two hours, we're back. No problem. I'm like, I have to be at work. It's 7.30 tomorrow. You'll be home by midnight. Back then, we stayed out late anyway. I'm like, okay, I'm game for it. So sure enough, he pull, pulls up in a little pickup truck. And uh, he's got a, a random assortment of furniture that looked wonderful to me since we had literally nothing. And he goes, let's go. So we get on the turnpike. And if you've ever been up that way, it's pretty straightforward. You go up the turnpike. You get off at um, Carlisle, and you go 81 south. And uh, you're about an hour on each road. And there was always construction up there. Um, so we're, you know, we're cruising along. You know, we're working on the six pack. And a couple beers was no big deal back then, drinking and driving. You know, it was fairly common amongst you know, people I hung out with. So um, you know, we're doing good. and. Um, we get on I-81, and um, all of a sudden, you know, it, it came down to, to one lane, you know, which happened a lot between the turnpike and I-81. They were always working on it, and it really was like a cattle shoot. It was really pretty narrow. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, driving with my friend, and all of a sudden, you know, we're probably going, you know, 50 miles an hour. It was like a 45, and uh, all of a sudden, a tractor trailer comes right up on our tail, and you know, I'm in the pickup truck. The mirror's here. You know, the guardrail's there. The guardrail's there. And this guy is like honking on the horn, you know, on our tail. And we hadn't done anything. We had never seen the guy before. Um, so, you know, we're, we're moving through this thing, and it's, it's a pretty long run. And the guy is literally right on our tail, honking the horn. So my friend, who was Sicilian, gave him <laughs> half the peace sign out, out, the, out, out, out the back. You know, it's a pickup truck, clear view of half the peace sign. And uh, all of a sudden, I look back. And the guy's got a gun pointed right at the back of the pickup truck. See both of our heads right there. I'm like, he's got a gun. <laughs> and he goes, you're kidding me. I'm like, he's got a gun. So boom, he hits the gas. The guy continues to floor it. And we're driving through this with a guy pointing a gun at us, driving a tractor trailer pretty well, I guess. You know, one guy in the truck. So finally, we get to the end. And it was one of those classic rest stops that you see where it was just kind of like a bathroom and it was real wooded where you could kind of pull off and other things probably happened back there but we went we pulled past the, the bathroom and as we as we were pulling off he passed us and I'm like I got his license I got his license I got it memorized you remember you know ABC I'll remember one two three whatever it was so we pull off and we, we skirt up towards the end of the rest stop and we're sitting there waiting to get out so I'm like, OK, there he goes. And he goes. We pull out to get back onto 81. He stops the tractor trailer, backs it up. We can't get out. He gets out of the car. And it was like Lee Harvey Oswald. He was just coming at us. It was all you know, tank top, tattoo. He didn't have the gun, but he was coming at us. And my buddy, in pure fight or flight, throws it into reverse. Pulls back, drives over the grass on the I-81, and takes off. And we were probably going 80 miles an hour, as fast as I think we'd go. We got out, and we feel like, wow, 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 we just survived something pretty dramatic there. And we still had about maybe 20 miles to go on 81 before we got off for Shippensburg. We get about 10 miles up, and all of a sudden, there's two tractor trailers right next to each other. The old, you know, the old, uh, uh, 
I forget this movie, Smoking a Bandit. Yeah, they're all smoking a bandit. And we're thinking this has happened for a reason. And we can't go around. And I'm like, we only have like three more miles. You just, we got to make it. So fortunately, we, got, we were able to get off. They, 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 they held their ground. We were able to get off at our spot. We drive into town. We get into town. We pull in. Shippensburg is a very small town. Um, police and fire in the same spot. We go, go, go right to the police. And, and we go in there. I'm like, we got to tell them. We got, we got to make this guy pay for it. So we go in, and we tell him the short version of the story. And the cop says, have you boys been drinking? <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of the story. He said, well, we'll give you a call. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll talk to the state police. And uh, we find that guy. We'll make sure he pays for it. But we never heard from him. And I didn't get to work till about, we didn't leave till the next morning. I got to work about 7 o'clock in the middle of time. So that's my story.